talked about joint rotation, we've talked about muscular relaxation. Nothing changes. Essentially, if you can develop this state initially as your response to any attack, it gives you the ability to move very, very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Anthony to honestly try to stop my hand. So I'm going to try and punch him, but not use this psyllium tau state that I'm talking about, not use this idea of pulling up my spine and relaxing my joints and my muscles. So I'm going to come in, and he can actually stop my hand. But if I actually, and I'll even step away, if I actually pull up, relax, let this go, I can get my hand in and out before he actually can stop me. He's trying to preempt it. The other side of that is that in response to an attack, if I am tense, I can't possibly respond fast enough because I've got to unlock the joint to be able to move the hand into position. So if he's attacking, my joints are tight. So he goes to punch me, my joints are tight. Two things will happen. I won't get there fast enough, but more importantly, I've talked about the fact that you provide a platform for the attacker's force to act on you. So even if you do get your hand there on time, you actually are ineffectual. He's still able to break your defense. And the whole idea of Wing Chun is to provide you with a mechanism, a vehicle that allows you to deliver all your body mass effortlessly with no hope of this individual being able to stop you. So if he's coming in to attack me, I can just relax and I can still break. Whereas if I'm tense, he actually bounces me. I'll try and be tense, so you punch me, I bounce away. You can see my joint opening up. If he was coming in with another attack, I'd get hit. Against coming in, I can hold him. I can hold him. And so the whole purpose of understanding how to set up your structure physically is to allow you to, for the want of a better word, fight and defend yourself with as little effort as possible. And with no real change to your structure. You don't have to have great muscle memory. There's no secret footwork. There's no special positioning. There's only set up your internal structure, set up your physical structure, and let the natural movement of the joints deal with the force that's applied to the body. And that's extremely important in fighting because fighting is a dynamic environment. People, things change very, very quickly. So you've got to be able to freely move with no effort. And this is really, really important. One of the important things is to be able to transfer your mass, all of your mass, on the point of contact, irrespective of where the initial point of contact is. This does two things. It allows you to break the opponent's structure immediately, and it allows you to deliver your body mass immediately, so that you effectively end the attack or the confrontation very, very quickly. If I ask most people to punch through the pads here, they would attempt to think of their hand as a piston, trying to travel from the point of contact here through the pads and trying to push through to actually hit um, Tony. This is typical of people trying to break multiple slabs of cement. They've actually got to punch right through the entire thing. For most people, not everyone. Wing Chun first form teaches you to focus. And what that focus is doing is allowing you to deliver your body mass at a point that's outside of your center of mass, outside of this reference frame that you call yourself, at a point that's over there rather than here. So a simple analogy is driving a car. You don't look at the steering wheel when you're driving a car. You actually look at the road in front of you. So in Wing Chun, when you're trying to deliver force, your focus should be towards the target. Even if your body, or the physical part of your body that's going to make contact and hitting, hasn't reached that target yet. So what happens is instead of me trying to focus on the pad and affect some sort of pushing into Tony, what Silam Tao teaches me to do is set up this structure again, relax, but focus into the target. And nothing changes. Because there's no physical stress on the body, the joint freely rotates, the muscle relaxes, and you're able to drop your weight into the target. So he can still feel that, and I'm hardly moving. You're just letting go, and you're driving it in. Now, what I might get him to do is explain what he feels when I hit the pad, because a lot of people think I'm pushing the pad, but I'm actually not pushing the pad. In fact, on point of contact, 
he feels, well, what do you feel, Tony? Can you please explain what you're feeling? It actually seems like it's gone straight through and connecting with my spine and I'm just collapsing. It, it straight away. It doesn't even feel like... There's anything in between. Nothing. This is important because in a fighting situation, the only bridge you may have may be the arm, the front of the arm. So in hitting, I don't want to hit here and not affect this mass. I want to actually break his structure. So I relax and I come in. And you can see his structure breaking and bending even though I'm making the contact here. Because my focus is at Tony's spine and through my movement, as I relax, I'm still pointing at him. And this is an important concept in the system. If you can actually relax your structure, it makes it so much more easier to focus. You can spend much more effort thinking, what do I want to do to the person, rather than how am I going to do it? And this is extremely important. One of the things, the idea of transferring your body mass, which is what I've just showed there, is that by simply touching, Tony's moving, and I'm hardly doing anything at all. I don't feel any strain in my body. And this is why Wing Chun done internally is deemed to be effortless. And that's, I'm, I'm not saying I'm effortless, I'm still trying to be effortless, but it's quite a simple matter of taking the structure that you've learned from Silam Tao and resting on people. Nothing to it. Simple, but not easy. <laughs>